Lots of side quests in video games can be boring filler, but some are the most legendary, memorable, or just plain good quests in some of the best games of all time. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 legendary side quests in video games. So before we get going, every single entry on this list is from an optional quest, sometimes easy to miss, sometimes pretty obvious, but you can avoid every single one of them. But why would you? They're fantastic. That's the point. Starting off with number 10, a house divided from Mass Effect 2. Easily one of the best characters you can recruit in this game is Legion, a unique death that functions independently from the hive mind. They were the primary enemy in Mass Effect 2, so getting one of your party was a pretty cool twist. Uh, the mission where you first meet Legion is required, but the second major Legion mission, his loyalty mission, is one of the best in the entire game, if not the entire series, and you can skip it if you want. Legion as a character adds a ton of depth to the previously fairly one-dimensional Geth, which basically functioned as space undead in the first game. They were kind of creepy and mechanical zombie things, and with Legion, you could find out a lot more about them and the unique way of experiencing the world that they had, how Geth isn't really a single unit, and each Geth robot is actually a collection of multiple programs. For this mission, Legion asked for your help to destroy a virus created by the Geth heretics who worship the universe consuming reachers, and if it was deployed, it would infect the rest of the Geth, force them to join the heretics uh, who by the way were in a genocidal war against all of organic life which wouldn't be nice that would be bad right uh, unless you're a psycho i don't know shepherd travels to the heretic station which houses thousands of sleeping geth robots it has this cool and sterile machine precision to it there's no windows there's no air minimal gravity And the reason for it is that Geth don't need any of that, obviously. What makes the mission so great is the oppressive atmosphere and the way that it adds to the Geth lore. They're one of the most interesting factions in the entire Mass Effect series, almost exclusively because of Legion and this single mission. And number nine is Iron Fist Alexander's quest from Elden Ring. Most of the quests in Elden Ring are pretty grim. Obviously, pretty tragic things pretty constantly in this game. Sometimes the characters are nuts, but not here. Yeah, Alexander's a little weird looking being a, you know, jar man. But the first time you manage to get him unstuck from a hole, he proves himself to be a real bro. Like a lot of the quests in this game, just finding where he is next is probably the hardest part. He shows up intermittently throughout the entire 100 hour game. And if you miss him once, you have to go back to get him for him to show up anywhere else. And the thing about this guy is that he actually does help you. At Redmain Castle, he helps you fight the boss. And in this case, the assistance is actually helpful. Uh, of course, for such a cheerful dude, the quest does end in tragedy, like in pretty much everyone else. Near the end of the game, he challenges you to a warrior's duel, which of course you win because he's a big jar. And all you get for it as a reward is just his disgusting innards and a shard that increases the power of jar weapons. But it's not really the treasure at the end that makes the quest so legendary. It's just Alexander himself. His bizarre appearance, jovial personality, and all-around hopefulness makes him one of the best NPC quests, not just in Elden Ring, but just from the entire From Software catalog. And number eight is Where the Cat and the Wolf Play from Witcher 3. For a series of games all about witchers, you never really hear a lot about more than just Geralt. Uh, there's a few recurring characters, but not really more than a handful. That's what makes this quest so shocking and memorable. You actually run into another witcher, like, kind of randomly. It's not even a quest you come by normally either. Instead, it starts after taking a pretty generic sounding contract called the Beast of Honorton. Uh, when you get to the town, instead of getting the standard contract negotiation and mission objectives, Geralt finds the town empty. You explore around enough, you find the head of Alessian, which causes Geralt to realize someone beat him to the contract. Eventually, you find a little girl that explains that a witcher massacred the entire village because of a disagreement over payment. You can find him and actually learn a bit more. He was at least a little justified because the villagers tried to ambush and kill him after he demanded the villagers pay the original, you know, agreed upon sum. And you are given the option to either kill this guy or spare him. In a fight, he actually uses signs against Geralt and some dirty tricks that, I don't know, he tries to get the upper hand with. For a random side quest, to have a full-blown Witcher boss fight is kind of surprising, and it just goes to show how many of the side quests uh, are incredible in The Witcher 3. 
And number seven is Miracle on Tenkaichi Street from Yakuza 0. The side content from the Yakuza games kind of all over the place. Sometimes legit interesting, other times total farce. You can never really tell exactly what you're going to get. One of the most all-time ridiculous and most memorable side quests comes from Yakuza 0, where Kiryu somehow gets involved in helping an American production that's filming in Kamurocho for some reason. At the start of the mission, Kiryu is kind of just like, oh, there's some celebrity here, whatever. Like, he doesn't care at all, but then immediately runs over to where they are and starts fixing their problems. The Americans in question are, of course, director Steven Spinning and the pop star Prince Miracle Johnson. The game is set in the 80s, so you can probably guess who they're supposed to be. Whole situation totally absurd. But the actual mission is somehow crazier like try to follow me here on this one your job is to protect miracle johnson from attacking zombies it's all related to the music video they're apparently making but like it's kind of real I, I don't know i i've never really known exactly what to make of this but i guess steven spinning is just really into method acting i don't know at number six is the Superhuman Gambit from Fallout 3, a, a, a fairly memorable and goofy side quest. If you've ever played Fallout 3, you know exactly the one we're talking about. The town of Canterbury Commons is a battleground between a supervillain and a superhero, and it's up to you to get things sorted out because the whole situation is driving the townsfolk totally crazy. There's the antagonizer, the supervillain who commands an army of giant ants, and the mechanist who is apparently a hero, but also has their own army of robots. You're given a lot of different ways to solve the situation, like, you can either get one of them to back down, you can use one to fight the other, or not side with either, kill them both. I mean, there's a lot of ways to resolve the situation. You and your pathetic tin cans are no match for my army. <laughs> the citizens of this town have nothing to fear. It's ridiculous, though. And as one of the starting missions of Fallout 3, it does a great job of illustrating how Fallout is pretty different from other super serious post-apocalyptic games. Things can get pretty goofy sometimes, and this mission is easily one of the more memorable examples of that. At number 5, Borderlands 2's quest, Kill Yourself. A little worried about what the YouTube algorithm is going to think about saying that. It's a quest in Borderlands. I can't change the name of it, you algorithm, you. Most quests uh, in Borderlands games are about, you know, killing everyone but yourself, but this one is different in that primary respect. Given to you by the game's main villain, Handsome Jack, the objective is simple, either do it or don't do it. Jack wants you to jump off a cliff, and if you do it, you get a reward, but if you don't do it, you don't get anything. Of course, killing yourself isn't gonna actually end the game, cause you'll just respawn after you die, but Jack literally says that if you do it, you're a sellout. It's a simple mission, but it definitely gave some players pause because you either get nothing, but don't do what the bad guy wants you to do, no matter how petty, or you do it and he makes fun of you, but you get a reward. It shouldn't matter because it's just a video game anyway. None of it matters in real life. But if you do it like I did, then you somehow feel a little dirty. Just a little. And number four is Gone Fishing from Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, the only quest in the game where Big the Cat makes an appearance. Just kidding. Not true. Not sure how well Big the Cat would fare in the world of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. But some of the best quests out there are the ones that can surprise you with something legitimately new. It's pretty rare when quests like that show up, and when they do, they stand out in Gone Fishing, a, a memorable example of what I'm talking about here. So, in the Chinatown area, you can talk to this unique-looking character named Ming Zhao, who wants your help hunting down this red dragon guy. She mentions that he's possibly a demon known as Henge Yukai, but you know how these games normally go. Uh, they just give him glowing eyes or something and call it a day. That's what makes his actual appearance such a surprise. You encounter the guy in the fish market, he transforms into a hammerhead shark man hybrid, and all you can do is kill him. It's the only time you ever see a monster like that in the whole game, and it's not even part of a main quest. You almost never really see games throw in new enemies or bosses and random side quests, like this kind anyways. Like, that's something you see in more offbeat and weird games like Control. Also, it's a hammerhead shark man. Like, it's kind of silly, too.
And number three is the Forsworn Conspiracy from Skyrim. Considered by many to be one of the best quests in this game, starts off with a murder. When you first enter Markarth, you see somebody getting attacked. You can't actually stop the person from getting killed, but either way, the investigation is on to see, you know, what was supposed to be going on here. What follows is actually a really interesting and involved investigation that ends in a twist where the guy you're helping out is killed and you get thrown in jail. From there, you can either meet up with the leader of the Forsworn and either help him escape from prison or work against him um it's even possible to help him then turn on him at the last minute most quests in skyrim have a really set outcome can't really do a lot to change what eventually happens but these quests give you a lot of different ways to resolve things throw in some interesting one-off characters and an interesting mystery and that makes this one of the best quests in the game i think we, we can you. overlook your crime but you now. had to just go and cause trouble now we have to pin all these recent murders on you silence witnesses Work, work, work. And number two is Fiona's Forest Quest from Chrono Trigger. Now, one of the best things about Chrono Trigger is the end game. At a certain point, you're free to just take on the final boss, Lavos, whenever, but there's still like tons of things left to be done, and they're just as good as the rest of the game's content. Some of the most memorable stuff to do is at the end of the game, but a common favorite is this surprising quest, which involves using some time travel to turn a barren desert into a lush forest. To start this one, you gotta talk to a woman named Fiona in her house in the middle of a desert in 600 AD. They want to start planting trees but they need your help to clear out an area of monsters called the sunken desert if you do that and then leave robo to help plant the seeds then when you return to the spot in 1000 ad you'll find a lush forward and the rusted remains of robo after fixing him up and camping in the forest a random time portal opens up and you control luca now where you get the ability to change the past and save her mother from getting injured on this mechanical contraption it, it definitely takes a turn at the end there but it's an interesting quest with a lot of memorable moments like the part where you have to input a password to save Luca's mother is especially tense, and it's especially impressive considering this is a side quest for a game from 1995. Like, the fact that there's an end game area in a JRPG from 1995 alone is actually pretty cool, but this is all really interesting story stuff. And number 10 is Emile's Determination from Nier Automata. Most of the side quests in Nier Automata are pretty forgettable, uh, but there are a few diamonds in the rough. Like, the most memorable, at least to me, is this one, which is both, like, the craziest quest in the game and the hardest to actually unlock. The only way to see this one is to upgrade every single weapon in the game to level 4, which, on its own, is quite a challenge. If you manage to unlock all those weapons and get them upgraded, then this secret quest pops up in the Desert Zone, where you can meet up with Emile, the grotesque skull face kid thing. Thing that shows up from time to time. He's a pivotal character from Nier, the original game, but he's little more than a cameo in this game, at least up to now. When you arrive, you find a giant Emil head in the desert that suddenly attacks, and this is the most dangerous enemy in the game by far. It even has a special attack where it attempts to self-destruct, which doesn't just kill you, it destroys the world and you get a unique ending. The fight is just bizarre, but if you're a fan of the series, getting some clues about Emil's bizarre history is pretty great, and the fight itself is so weird and worth it just to see this. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.